semifinals, Mankind versus Steve Austin. So Austin, uh, he uh, beat the boss man in the first round, but by DQ, and uh, boss man beat him up. But then he got a second round bye, because William Regal and X-Pac went to a double count out of ring in the first round. So, of course, the uh, people involved hate Steve Austin, want him to lose. That's their number one priority. Steve Austin cannot get this title back, so uh, Mankind's their chosen guy to fight him. There was a point in this match where Mankind was getting beat up so badly, he just tried to run away. He left the ring and sprinted up the aisle. And I don't recall seeing that much before. And they ran him down. The Stooges ran him down and talked him back into it. And uh, Man, if you think AEW refs are lenient on countouts, like <laughs> half these matches were fought outside the ring. It's also the era where somebody said WWF, they muted it, and Austin's, everyone's middle fingers were pixelized. So that's going on. And, uh, of course, there's 10,000 spots with a chair. None of them are a DQ. Uh, DDT on the chair, not a DQ. Backdrop on the chair, not a DQ. So finally, Austin hits a stunner. The uh, heels attack the referee, pull him out of the ring, destroy him. So Austin is pissed, but he stuns Mankind again. Shane runs out in a referee's shirt, and apparently this is a heel turn. But he counts two and stops and flips Austin off. And Austin's pissed. And uh, eventually, the Stooges hit Austin with a chair shot. Mick makes the cover, and Shane finally counts three. There were so many shenanigans going on here. Yeah, but you know what? It's we've seen it a thousand times. It's it's we got to beat Steve Austin. We don't want to beat Steve Austin. And so nowadays, they would have done one of these eighteen things that they did to finally screw the guy. But here, it was like, okay, we got to have Vince pull the ref out of the ring. We've got to do blah, blah. It's like they wanted you to, they wanted to make sure, they idiot proofed you, the idiot. This guy was screwed. He was screwed. And even though he lost, he didn't really lose. And, you know, we say this every time we watch a Steve Austin match this guy works his ass off. Mm -hmm. He works his ass off. He's sweating balls. He's going as hard as he can for a match with a finish like this, by the way. You know. And he's gone again. So afterwards, the uh, heel family leaves the building, get in the car and drive away, and Stone Cold finds a car. He drives after them. And so that would be the last we see of any of them. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I thought... Go ahead, Craig. Do you have something for this one? No, I'm good. Yeah, the... Shane giving the middle fingers off to Austin, being the heel ref, and then Austin gets like that weak chair shot, and then Shane being the heel ref still counts three, not even a fast count. I thought to beat Austin in this way was was weak. And then Brian was talking about just how hard Austin was going. Like this was after I was trying. Yeah, sorry. After um, Owen had dropped him on his head, so he's already come back from neck surgery. Right. And Austin is going as hard as that after that. So, yeah, that part was impressive, but the weak-ass finish was it's, not. Uh, it's overbooked mess. Yeah. He hated it. Well, Sean brings up an interesting point with the uh, fast count that Shane did. And it and, wasn't fast. Well, that, that, the, the, that should have been a fast count, but it just reinforces, if you there is a guy you want to win this tournament, fixing it should not be as hard and elaborate as all this was. You just tell the referees when he gets a count, Count as fast as you can. When he's being pinned, don't count. It should not have to be all this this epic saga of of uh, because overbooking, yes, overbooking yeah. of heel refs. I hate heel refs. Also, part of that shenanigans when uh, Mr. McMahon gets up out of his wheelchair and punches Ch uh, uh, Chioda. Chioda, that is not a fake punch. That guy <laughs> was leveled because he sucked. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we talked about this before all these scandals. This guy sucked. He hit people way too hard. He couldn't take a bump. He's pretty much the only person in the history of the fucking planet that couldn't take a stunner, except for his wife. And you know how many times he had, you know how many opportunities he had to practice the stunner? How many stunners do you think that guy took in his life? Hundreds. If you count TV and post show and, you know, they always did the match to send the fans home happy and he went out there and got stunned. That fucking guy could never take a stone cold stunner. The easiest move on this fucking planet to take. <laughs> he sucked in many different ways. Not only was this match overbooked, but the whole storyline was completely overbooked. They had Mankind as going to be their corporate champion, but they had The Rock in their back pocket. It's, it doesn't make yeah, a lot of well, sense. Well, well. 
Well, apparently the, the story that they tell with them is they they literally just wanted to screw the fans. That was their goal. Okay, All worked. Right. The other semifinal is Undertaker versus Rock. Ugh. So I forget the whole setup, but there was some deal where like Taker and Kane were like co-champions, or they were fighting for a vacant belt or something. So they had a first round. I buy. can actually explain this. Believe okay. it or not. All right. Kind of. So Austin won the title, and then they did the uh, first blood match, which Kane won. Yes. Remember that? King yes. of the Ring? Yes. And then Austin won it back the next day. And then Vince signed Austin versus Undertaker and Kane, if I recall correctly. Okay, this is sounding familiar now. Okay, yeah. and then they beat him two on one. They did the double pin. They yeah, they, they both pinned him at the same time. And then the next day, Vince was supposed to award the title to one or the other. But something happened, yeah. and he got angry about it, and so he just held up the title. Gotcha. There, there was a and th there was a, 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 a match between Kane and Undertaker, and Vince made Stone this Cold was the referee. Okay, this was afterwards. They, they did something where he got mad, and so he did not... Uh, award the title to either of them. He held it up. And then it was going to be decided in Undertaker versus Kane with Steve Austin as the referee. Right. And the storyline was if Steve Austin didn't call it down the middle, he would be fired. Mm -hmm. And so he didn't call it down the middle, and he beat them both up, and he announced himself as champion. And right. so Vince did fire him in storyline. And then I think that's what led to this show. But it's a big fucking full convoluted thing. Yeah. And there was that, a, that's, uh, that's what happened. There was a toy gun with a uh, flag. In that's it. right. That's yes. remember Vince well. peed his pants. Yeah. They yes. did the uh, the fake gun, and then Austin had a contract that signed him for five years or whatever. Yes. Right. Yeah. Anyway, the point of all this is Undertaker and Kane in this tournament each had a first round bye. And then they met in the second round, where Taker apparently just won clean, which I find impossible to believe going over this. But as far as I can tell, is what happened. So it's Undertaker versus Rock. All of these matches are exactly the same. They're going to brawl outside for 15 straight minutes and then do a chin lock in the ring. And then Boss Man's going to do something. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, Rock goes to the people's and elbow. by the way, it was the Zamboni. It was the Zamboni. Okay. Steve Austin beat him up after the Zamboni thing, and Undertaker and Kane didn't save Vince. I That's see. That's what made Vince mad, and so I he see. held up the title. Gotcha. All right. All right, so they're doing some stuff here. Boss Man trips Rock at some point, but then Taker punches Boss Man, so they're clearly on the same side. So Kane comes down and gets in the ring. And Undertaker clearly has a grip on the rock at this time. And Taker looks over at his brother Kane. They make eye contact. And Taker pitches rock right to him. Well, what do you think is going to happen? Kane grabs rock by the throat. Freezes a bit for the big dramatic goozle. Lifts him high in the air. And slams him down. And it's a DQ and the rock wins. Taker is pissed. Oh, that's on you, bud. You fed Rock right to that guy. What do you think was going to happen? And then you stood there and watched as this chokeslam happened. It didn't stop him at all. I have no sympathy for The Undertaker. This show sucks. And he blamed Hebner for it, too. Hey, punched the ref. It's not the ref's fault, dummy. Yeah, there was... Um, Hebner was standing there. Uh, and then um, at some point, Boss Man came down on the ring. And... For, to me, it looked like Hebner was just having a conversation with the boss man for the rest of the match. <laughs> he was just looking outside, just not watching one thing that was going on in the ring, just talking to boss man. Say, what's up? It was horrible. You know, that was the other thing, one, that uh, the Steve Austin match with, uh, with Mankind. Like, at the end of that match, they, I mean, even after the interference spot, like, somebody forgot something. Because they're talking in the corner, they're calling spots, they're running more spots, they're waiting for these goddamn stooges to jump up on the apron. I was like, my God, it's too many cooks in the kitchen. That is for sure. Yeah, yeah. So the main event, the finals, Rock versus Mankind. So before we even get to the match, a couple of things. Uh, the heels have overturned. The McMahons tell the boss man he has the rest of the night off. And I thought, well, Jesus Christ, been everywhere. He's been working for three straight hours. He's earned a night off. They're going to take care of this one personally. Jim Ross actually mentions it's going to be another Montreal. We are exactly one year removed from Montreal. Uh, okay. Uh, they, pr they did promise that no matter what happens, the viewers will get to see all of this pay-per-view. And uh, Lawler pointed out, you know, not everyone got to see that. 
And Jim Ross says, well, that's not very nice, picking on those who are less fortunate. And I laughed, because this is a month after that Halloween Havoc. They went long, and like half the people didn't see the Goldberg DDP main event they paid for. So all of this is more interesting than this Which actual... Which is funny, by the way, mm. because then they put that match on TV for free and did like a monster well, number. Well, that's mm. what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, all of this is more interesting than the match, which nobody cares about at all. So we are here in Kansas City, Missouri, and my memory of this is that, uh, at least based on crowd reaction, The Rock was the most popular guy when you know when he really got to be The Rock. Uh, he was the most popular guy on the coast. If they went to Seattle or L.A. or Miami, New York, it would be a, a rock crowd. But since Middle America loved them some Stone Cold Steve Austin. He was their guy. And this is Kansas City, which is like dead center America, and... They came to see Steve Austin win this belt back, and when they did not get Steve Austin even in the finals, they didn't care that much about Mankind or Rock. They were already very disappointed. So they're into nothing. Nothing. And it is technically the fourth match for each guy, even though the first two went a combined like three and a half minutes. Uh, or not even that, combined 33 seconds. But uh, they're just doing chin locks. And uh, there's chairs and stairs being used, more chin locks. And I'm, I'm checking the timer, like, how can there be 15 minutes left? Turns out there was a lot of talking after that. So, eventually, somewhere in here, Mankind on his fifth chin lock, the crowd did start to chant for Rocky to fire him up and get him going. And uh, then things started to pick up. We get the, the, the big Mick Foley spots. He misses the apron, elbow off the apron to the floor. He misses an elbow, puts himself to the Spanish announce desk. Rock follows the people's elbow, and suddenly everyone is standing in this building. Standing. So Mick makes a comeback, goes for Mick, uh, 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 Socko, and there's a huge smile on his face and chance for Rocky as he's trying to escape. Rock hits a rock bottom to escape that. He makes a cover, and Mick kicks out. And then Rock gets up, looks at Vince, shoots him the eyebrow, puts on a sharpshooter, and Vince says to ring the fucking bell. It is, in fact, a Montreal screw job one year after Montreal, and The Rock oh. is your new WWF world champion. You know what's funny is I totally forgot they did this finish. Like, I knew that Rock ended up being the corporate champion. I knew they screwed mankind. I was trying to remember, what the fuck did they do? I don't care. I'll just watch it. And when he puts him in the sharpshooter and they ring the fucking bell, I was like, oh, my God. I guess maybe if it had been like just, you know, we hadn't seen it 5,000 times. But having seen it 5,000 times to go back and see it again, I was like, could you come? Up, could you have come up with a shittier finish than that one? I was aghast. What a horrible, horrible finish. I had forgotten that they did this finish here. And when they actually did the finish, I got mad because they recreated that Montreal Screwjob finish over and over over and over again and not just in this company we can let the, we can put this to bed right they're, they're never going to do this again right vince is gone this is not going to happen again right please i'm pretty sure it's dead it's been done now yeah yeah so then it is time for a 15 minute closing show promo here in this pay-per-view uh, i skipped it what did i miss um not much actually uh jim ross screaming they screwed us all they screwed us all including you the fans at home got screwed purchasing this as pay-per-view here mm -hmm. and uh vince just says he will the fans are as pathetic and gullible as mankind he will elaborate more tomorrow night and shane and rock run their mouths insult the fans for a while the only thing really of note here is that mankind protest says i don't understand dad because i was not pinned i did not submit what's going on and his answer is that Rock hits him from behind, hits the rock bottom. Heels are all celebrating together, but they did at least want to send the fans home on some happy note. So Steve Austin returns from the road, and uh, he's still shirtless. He's still sweaty. He hits the ring, beats up Rock, stuns him. Stuns poor Mankind as well. What a horrible night for Mankind when all said and done. Uh, that show sucked. Thumbs down. Would not recommend. For uh... Yeah, but you know what? You know what? The show did suck, but ultimately, what is the job of pro wrestling, a promoter? And that is to put something together to lead to something later on that's going to draw a lot of money. And you see from this show that they already knew exactly what they're going to do for WrestleMania, what the big match was going to be, which, of course, was Rock versus Steve Austin. And this set the table for that match. And, you know... 
that match drew gigantic. Uh, that was ninety nine, right? It was it was Rock uh, and Steve yes. Austin. Yeah, first one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the, you could you could see watching the show that that was exactly what this was designed to do. Screwed Steve Austin. Austin's a huge baby face. Nope. I totally agree. I mean, yeah. He's right. Yeah. He makes good points. Yeah. yeah, but you could have done it without all the mumbo jumbo leading up to it, though. I think Vince Russo whispering in Vince's ear led to what eventually happened, but fill in some time while Brian. I connecting. have had no fucking problems until this show. <laughs> Jesus, what's going on? God. <laughs> hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.